Dr. Leonard, sir. Good evening, Doctor. How are you, Mike? Mighty good if you come. Sit down. Sorry to make you work overtime. But... All right, Mike. We psychiatrists have no set hours. As a matter of fact, much of our work is done at night when we have an opportunity to study our patients in their own homes. It's not about myself. It's that boy of mine. What seems to be the trouble? To be frank, he's an awful disappointment to me. In what way? It's embarrassing to have to say these things about your own son. But hang it all, he's a soft thing. No red blood. You know what I mean? We haven't a thing in common. You ever discussed this matter with him? No, I haven't. I never saw much of the boy until a few months ago. Been away at prep schools, college. My interest kept me chasing all over the country. He's been raised by an old maid sister of mine. Well, maybe it's that influence. I thought of that. But it gripes me to think a son of mine would let anyone make a sissy of him. Has he any particular hobbies? Yeah. Scientific research. Symphony concerts. For all I know, he can probably do a bang-up job of crocheting. Good evening, Wilson. Good evening, sir. Thank you. Grant! You want me, Father? Grant, I want you to meet Dr. Charles Leonard, a friend of mine. This is a great pleasure, Doctor. I attended a lecture you gave some weeks ago on the uh, racial characteristics of the penguin. Is that so? Are you uh, a penguin enthusiast? Well, uh, it's almost a hobby with me. I've done quite a bit of research on the subject. Then maybe you'd be interested in an article I have coming out in next month's ethnographic review. Oh, I'll certainly read it, Doctor. You know, uh, I thought for some time it would be an interesting experiment, uh, from a scientific standpoint, to cross the emperor penguin... <coughs> well, I'd like to continue this, Doctor, but unfortunately I have an appointment. Uh, can't we have lunch uh, sometime? I'd be delighted. I'll give you a ring. Excuse me, Father, I have to change. What is it tonight, son? Another symphony concert? No, Father. Just a little experiment in physiology. Good night, Doctor. Well, there you are, Doctor. What can you do with a guy like that? Of course it's too soon to draw conclusions. But offhand, I don't see anything wrong with him. That's just it. There's nothing wrong with him. He doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke. He doesn't even cuss. Well, those are usually considered good qualities. The boy seems to have an excellent mind. I don't want a bookworm, Doctor. I want a he-man. When I was his age, I was out raising the old Harry. What does he do? Studies the love life of the penguin. I've been listening to the dance music coming from the silver room of the town and country hotel. We'll be on the air again the same time tomorrow night. Your announcer is Charlie Allen. This is station WBQ. Hello, folks. We're coming to you from the ringside of the Coliseum, where we're going to give you a grunt-by-grunt -grunt broadcast of the regular weekly wrestling matches. The semifinal is about to go on now, and the place is jammed. Immediately following this bout, folks, we're going to have the match that everyone has been looking forward to. The mass marvel gets his greatest test when he meets the Russian lion, the great Magnov Leonovich. There goes the bell, folks. Listen to that crowd. You only have 30 minutes, sir. Thank you, Evan.
financial interests are purely intellectual. Now, you take, for instance... nature of an experiment, but I think a change of environment may bring about the desired result. I hope so. Anyway, I'm willing to try it. Well, good night, Mike. Good night, Doctor. Thank you again. I was a cinch boy. We make a barrel of them. I told you I wasn't interested in the money, Joe. Yeah? Well, I am. The newspapers are just waiting for you to take off that mask. Why, it'll be colossal. Can you imagine the headlines in the newspapers? Masked model turns out to be millionaire's son. Now, listen, Joe. Our agreement was that I was not to be known as a millionaire's son. After all, I have the old man's feelings to consider, you know. But he'd be proud of you. Listen, why don't you try him out? Have a have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with him. No use, Joe. He's got me down as an intellectual, a highbrow. Maybe it's the way I've been raised. It'll be a terrific disappointment to him to find out I'm just a rough naked heart. Well, there are plenty of rich man's sons that have gone into sport. You told me yourself that he was a self-made man. He wasn't a highbrow. Well, maybe that's why he wants me different. Anyway, I wear the mask or I don't wrestle. Is that understood? What are you going to do with a guy like that? Grant, how'd you like to go up to Timberlake and learn the logging business? Hasn't my work at the oh, office? Oh, isn't that. You put in your hours. But you've always said you had no great yen for office routine. Yes. So I've been thinking that maybe a couple of months of Timberlake might sort of toughen you up. Well, of course, if you want me tough... But... There's no use mentioning matters, Grant. You need contact with life. In a logging camp, you'll get it. Besides, Timberlake's going to belong to you one of these days. And you should know something about it. What do you say? I'll do anything you say, Dad. Don't yet, me. All right, then. I like it first rate. Is that any better? Worst of you going up there is my son. Things will be made too easy for you. Well, uh, couldn't I just sort of go up and get a job? There ought to be something I could do. I was hoping you'd say that. I'll give Martin a letter telling him to put you on. Hmm. Say you're the son of a friend of mine. When do I leave? Oh, maybe in the next couple of days. Hmm? I want you to realize what you're going up against. It's a pretty rough life. Nothing like you've had here. Well... In that case, I guess I'd better get a good night's rest. See you in the morning, Dad. Good night. Good night, sir.
in the ground there somewhere. Yes. What sort of a looking fellow is Morton? Oh, he's a big three-decker. You won't have no trouble picking him out. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Everybody pension. Well, how are we going to do that, Nick? It's easy. The whole thing is as plain as my nose on your face. <laughs> we phone club. Everybody who is belong to the club is paid dues. I take all the dues. I go to Washington. I fix the pension. Back <laughs> on old age pension now. Old age pension. Sure. But old age pension is for old men. What we want is old age pension for a man who is too young to be old. What we want is for everybody to get one thousand dollars. Why don't you tune off for a change? What's the matter, Mr. Sanger? The United States is a free country, don't it? Not for you, Puzzle Puss. <laughs> Much obliged, big boy. <laughs> Don't mention it. Don't mention it. I uh, didn't quite catch that gentleman's name. Who, him? That's Mr. Sanger, Mr. Paul Sanger. Is he connected with the Timberlake camp? No, no, he's the field boss for the Osei outfit. Mm -hmm. Osei outfit. <laughs> I'm always hungry, Nick, but first of all, I'd like to find Mr. Morton. Oh, well, what do you do? You lumberjack? <laughs> Hope to be. I'm up here to learn the business. Oh, it's good. I, I wise you up. You do me a good turn, I reciprocate. Well, <laughs> that's fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> do I have to stand in line, Peggy? Of course not, Mr. Morton. There you are. Oh, he is Mr. Morton now. How is your father? Not the same. Doesn't seem to be any improvement. No. Tell him I'll come over and see him. Thanks, I will. Uh, thanks, Nick. See you later. I beg your pardon. Are you Mr. Ben Morton? Why? Well, I'm Grant. Uh, Bill Grant. Mr. Curran told me to apply to you for a job. Oh, yes, I remember now. Well, I wasn't expecting you for a few days. Those the only clothes you bought? Why, uh, no, I... Well, go to the company store and get yourself an outfit. You can't pay for it. Haven't put it on your ticket. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morton. All right. Come on, folks. 
Miss O'Shea. I just had three cards of log stitch. How? Some bullhawk left the switch open. I threw on the brakes, but I was going as fast I could make the curve. The last cars went down the ravine. That's the second time in a month that switch has been left open. It cost us a lot of money. Get the boys together and load the crane. Go back up there and see if you can salvage any of those logs. I'll follow with the speeder. And tell the boys not to say anything to Father. Right. You wait here, Marcus. I just shame, Peggy. I guess I better go with him. I'm beginning to feel like an awful hero. Why? Are they going to tip over a few logs? Ben, I think we ought to lay off this rough stuff. What do you mean, lay off the rough stuff? We've got to keep O'Shea from making good in his contract, don't we? I'm working for O'Shea. It's like sticking a knife in the old man's back. Wait a minute. Who do you think you're kidding with this conscience stuff? You planned the whole thing, didn't you? Took me to buy his notes in the bank, didn't you? And when I take over the O'Shea property, you get your split, don't you? Yes, but I... Yeah, but you suddenly get an idea you might marry Peggy and grab the whole work for yourself. Look, I don't have to ask you for permission to marry anybody. That won't interfere with the other deal. Well, it better not. Right, you put the crimp on wait me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Forget all about it, will you? I was kidding. Say, by the way, who was that young rah-rah boy you just put on? Ah, some friend of old man Kearns. Wants me to toughen him up. I'll make it so tough you run home in a week. I'll bet you will. Do Parky make some matches? Can't you see Bill trying to carve his name? You ever try hitting that twice in the same place? Don't you understand? That's that New York style. <laughs> oh! That's all for today, Parky. jokes for Park Avenue. He's good fellow, that kid, and he's got plenty brains. Oh, go hollering rain barrel. How does he stand on the pensions, Nick? Pensions? I tell you how he stand on the pensions. There he goes again. <laughs> Look, if we got more fellas around here like Park Avenue, we stand better chance with pension. You know why? Because he's understand pension. He's know there come a time in every man's life when he can't get work. And if he can't get work, he can't get his daily bread. And if he can't get his daily bread, what he's going to eat. Hey. <laughs> oh, you think he's funny, hey? Well, let me tell you something, sport. You better think of your future. Hey, Nick, if you think anything of your future, you'll shut your trap and pass around the grub. <laughs> <laughs> That's telling him, isn't it? Thank you, brother. Don't mention it, old chap. All right. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Mr. Morton. Hello, Brett. Hey, you sure need the manicure, Sam, old chap. Yeah, I ain't a time to get out of the beauty parlor yet. Come to think of it, I'll ask my father puff my duffel bag. <laughs> nice work, girls. Nice work. <laughs> <laughs> I make them beams for myself. Well, we You like the beams, boy? Yeah. Why you don't have some more? Coffee is pretty good. Coffee is always good. Sometimes the beams are so good. Well, you might have all the Coffee, you like the coffee? I like what you see everybody drinking plenty of coffee, you know? Of course, that makes me feel like I'm good cooks. You're a good cook. Every 
More coffee, brother? No, thanks, Nick. Mr. Morton, you like more coffee? No. By the way, Mr. Morton, did you find out who derailed the O'Shea logs yesterday? No. He's none of our crowd. Well, that's what comes of having a woman running out there. Yes, it does seem unusual for a girl to be running a lumber camp, huh? Yeah, but she's run it very good. Hey, what are you talking about? There's a lot of poor hunks over there that don't know anything. Hey, sport, you, uh, you like to dance? Yes, yes, dance. I like it, of course. Well, you know, every Saturday night, the loggers just go to Pemberton to dance. Big time every Saturday night. Everybody make whoopsie. Does uh, Miss O'Shea go to these dances? Well, I never see Miss O'Shea. Anyhow, the loggers just don't ask her to dance because Mr. Sanger, you know, is crazy about Miss O'Shea. Well, is, uh, is she that way about him? I, I don't know what way she is. But the uh, loggers keep away from her anyhow. Otherwise, Mr. Sanger is get very sore. Oh, well, we'll have to break up Sanger's monopoly. Suppose I ask her to go to the dance. Yeah, but you you don't know me, so say. Well, couldn't I have gone to college with a brother? Has she got a brother? I don't know if she's got a brother. If she's got a brother, he don't come around this time. No, we'll soon find out. I'll give her a ring. Hey, you crazy, big boy. She's going to throw you down. It's all right, Nick. You catch me on the first pounds. No, this is Miss McLean. Oh, just a minute. It's for you, Peggy. Who is it? See what they want. Miss O'Shea is busy. What is it you want? Why, uh, <clears throat> I went to college with a chap uh, by the name of O'Shea, and uh, uh, he told me that his people own some lumber up in this uh, region. I was wondering if it could be the same family. Naturally, if it was, I wanted to call and pay my respects. Just a moment. I think it's that dude that had you disqualified yesterday. What does he want? He says he went to college with your brother and he wants to come over and talk it over. What are you talking about? I haven't any brother. If you ask me, I think it's a gag. Hang up on him. Wait a minute. Let's have some fun. Get him over here and see how far you go. No. Come on. Oh, Peggy, come on. Come and talk. Come on. Hello. This is Miss O'Shea. I understand you know my brother. Oh, yes. Is he at home now? I really have no idea where he is. Well, I, he made me promise that I was, if I was ever in this neck of the woods, that I'd be sure and drop in. What? Oh, thank you. Thank you ever so much. Be right over. See, Nick? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Hey, what'd she say to you? What do you think she said? Wants me to come right over. Oh, you made good guess about the brother, eh? I hit the nail right on the head. Do you think so how that? do you get to their house, Nick? To her house is always easy. You take the footpath to the bridge at the lower fork, and then you take the path on the other side, and you keep walking continuously. Well, thanks very much, Nick. <laughs> very helpful. I'll see you later. Hey, you tell her I went to college, too. Baba College? Here's the old family friend. You go to the door. No, he's not coming to see me. Good evening. Oh, it's you. <laughs> Come in. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Oh. Oh, good evening. How do you do? Oh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Grant. Oh, Miss McLean. Good evening. We met at the sack race yesterday. Yes, that's right. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Comfortable here. Yes. <clears throat> it's quite a coincidence, Mr. Grant. I mean, you knowing Peggy's brother. Oh, yes, yes. It's very fortunate for me. Yes. yes. Do you think Peggy looks like her brother? Well, uh, of course, there's a family resemblance. It's too bad Peter isn't here now, isn't it? Oh, gosh, yes. I'd love to see old Pete. So would I. It was a shame that Peter lost his beautiful blonde hair, wasn't it, Mr. Grant? Uh, lost his hair? 
did. Why, surely you remember. That happened while he was at college. Oh, yes, that was a tragedy. Poor Pete. He was very sensitive about it. What are you two talking about? You didn't have blonde hair. His hair was as dark as mine. Well, nothing of the kind, Peggy. I'll leave it to Mr. Grant. Well, uh, truthfully, I, I wouldn't say it was black, and I wouldn't say it was blonde. This is Mr. Grant. Oh. How do you do, Mr. Grant? Good evening, Mr. O'Shea. Father, we would find something for us. Yes? What was the color of Peter's hair? Peter? Hey, who? Why, your son, Peter. Son? I never had a son. You never had a son? If you'll entertain Mr. Grant Marge and I'll finish the dishes. Hmm. Excuse us, Mr. Grant. Oh, certainly, certainly. Uh, sit down, Mr. Grant. Thank you. I've unintentionally enlarged your family tree. Yes, I have the wrong O'Shea. <laughs> There's enough of them around. Newcomer? Uh, yes. Came yesterday. Work for us? No, I'm over with the Timberlake outfit. Oh. Hmm. Oh, allow me, please. Hello, Peck. Oh, good evening. Check your hat. Right in. Mr. Grant, this is my field boss, Mr. Sanger. How are you feeling, Matt? Oh, well, do I suppose. I thought you were going to drop in this afternoon. Well, I was, but I got tied up down to loading shoot. Have a cigar? No. No, thanks. Never touch it. Did you stop in at the bank? Yeah, I stopped. Well, what did you find out? Come on, man. Speak up. Well, I, uh, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I think I'll join the lady. See if I can lend a hand. My face, Red. Come on in. Yes, tell us another bedtime story, Mr. Oh, Graham. Oh, I surrender. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? I should say I am. You know, I've never been caught like this before. Judge McLean, will you pass sentence on the defendant? <coughs> Prisoner? Or what have you to say for yourself? I plead guilty, Your Honor, and throw myself on the mercy of the court. Well, the sentence of this court is... You take off that coat. Roll up your shirt sleeves. Get it those dishes. Thank you, Your Honor. And may I further add punishment that I be remanded to the custody of Miss O'Shea in order to report on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Your Honor, I object to the prisoner placing himself in my custody. <coughs> well, uh, objection overruled. Prisoner will report and do that. Thank you, pal. I mean, Judge. <laughs> Up you go. There. <laughs> Oh, I hope so. Ooh, there. Very nice, too. Well, it was a funny thing, you know. <laughs> when I first started, I mean, when I got the idea to come over here, that is, when I called you girls up. So he says, the hobo says, give me a dollar, or don't give me a dollar, but don't try to teach me my business. <laughs> I suppose that's meant as a hint to me, but I still say you don't know how to wash dishes. <laughs> oh, you do, huh? Well, I still say I'll come over here every night until I learn how. It wouldn't have been any better if I'd have told you about it this afternoon. I'm going to upset you anyway. Besides, it might not mean anything at all. Not mean anything. Of course it means something. Don't be fooled. Why didn't the bank notify me? It's a dirty, low-down, conniving trick. What's the matter, Father? Oh, some dirty sneak bought my notes up at the bank. Why didn't you tell me about this? Why should I bother you about it? What difference can it make? It's already done. Who bought the notes? Timberley. That penny-snatching old buzzard Curran. He wants to get a stranglehold on me. But your contract with the Clayton Mills will more than pay off these notes. I know, but if we don't get our first full run to the mills by the middle of the month, the contract's broken. Then he can walk in here and buy the place of the sheriff's sale. Ah, oh, Matt, you're exaggerating things. Exaggerated nothing. Her knows I won't sell, so he wants to snatch the place from me. Now, now, Father, please. 
Let's drop it for the night, Paul. You see how upset he is. All right, Peg. I'll drop in in the morning, Matt. Don't you worry about that run of love. I'll get it through for you. All right. Remember, I'm dependent on you. You can do that, too. I'll see you later. Hey, you. You coming with me? Oh, uh, why, yes, I guess so. Don't you worry yourself, Peggy. Everything's going to be all right. Well, good night, Mr. O'Shea. Oh, oh, good. Very, very sorry about your trouble. Oh, good night, son. Drop, drop in any time. Thank you, I will. How about you, Judge? Can we see you home? No, thanks. I'm staying here all night. Oh, good night. Good night. And, uh, good luck. Thank you for a very pleasant evening. Come on there, fella. Father invited me to drop in any time. You might contradict my father. It doesn't take you very long to get acquainted, does it? Well, I guess it's the spirit of the great outdoors, you know? Yeah. What are you doing up here, anyway? You don't belong in a logging camp. My, uh, help. Your what? Your help. Yes, the doctor said I needed building up. Nick, I've been expecting this. He's come about an hour ago, but I don't got no chance to bring him down before. What's the matter? You got bad news? Well, it's indefinite. Indefinite? Oh, that's very bad, indefinite. Look out for that. You know, one time, employment agency is offered me a job in lumber camp. And they say they will tell me when to go. I stay home for one week and I wait. But no one is telling me when to go someplace. So finally I send them telegram and I say, Hello, when I'm leaving for lumber camp. They send me back telegram and they say, Start indefinite. Well, I sit on a train for three days. But I don't find this place indefinite. Come over to see a good outfit work? Yeah. You don't know where we can find one, do you? Mr. Morton, you can do us a big favor. Well, do you know how you stand with me? What is it? We're terribly short-handed. It'll be a tremendous help if you can lend us a few of your men. Gosh, I'd like to help you, Peggy, but we're not overstocked with men, and our cut's only half through. But you have no time limit on your delivery. We have. Mr. Morton, if we fall down on this contract, it'll just about kill my father. You've often expressed your friendship for him. And I know he'd do as much for you. Trying to put me on the spot. Well, all right. Oh, put these names down. Osgood, Krakow, Lumsky. Oh, yes, and Grant. Grant? Why, he's a greenhorn. He doesn't know anything about Morgan. Well, he's all right. He's a hard worker. After all, what you need is manpower. Well, don't suppose I can afford to be particular, can I? Will you collect the men and bring them over, Paul? Sure. Thanks, Mr. Morton. Oh, that's all right. Forget it. You're getting to be a regular Santa Claus, aren't you? No, don't worry. Any help she gets out of that bunch, she can put in her eye. You know, what'd they have to send this guy Grant over for? He's one of those life of the party guys. Moving in already. I found him down those shades last night when I went over. Oh, that's where the shoe pinches, huh? Afraid of a little opposition with Peggy. Why, you poor sap, I'm putting the guy right in your lap. Anything happened to him wouldn't be your fault. You would be awfully sorry, wouldn't you?
you're pushing him along too fast, Paul. There's only one way to be a lumberjack. That's the hard way. You've been giving party assignments that are risky even for an experienced logger. It's dangerous. Just what is this parky business? The guy's been like your shadow for three weeks now. I haven't been able to get near you. You're the one that's being silly. Everybody on the place is getting wise to you. You act like you're crazy about the guy, and I think you are. Just who do you think you're talking to? A male flunky? I don't care what you or anybody else thinks. Is that plain enough? Listen, Peg. I'm sorry I spoke out of turn. All right. We won't say any more about it. You know how I feel about you. We won't say any more about Peg, that Peg, I can't hey, help it. If... Hey, I'll drop in at your house tonight, huh? I'd rather you didn't. Hey, I've got to talk to you. Please. Hey. Looks like you're getting some lumber cut over here. We're doing our best. If you don't get some gumption in you, you'll get that shipment through and I'll be holding the bag. Oh, why don't you dry up? If you'd have just kept that guy Grant over with you where he belongs. You mean to say that Grant speeded the cut? The guy never had an axe in his hand up to a few weeks ago. Well, he's one of them pep guys. Only takes one man to set a pace, you know that. I'd like to slap his ears down, only we get me in worse with Peggy. Well, you don't have to do it. Remind me to ask you something by and by, William. It can't be very important if I have to remind you of it. Most important question I've ever asked. Folks, the next dance will be a tag dance. Everybody dance. Pleasure for this job. Come on, Spain. Well, that 
with some merry-go-round they had you on. Did you ever see such nerves? Imagine Parker letting those fellows treat me that way. Well, I expected any minute to see Parky tear into them. Tear into them? Why, he was as meek as a lamb. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. I don't know how you missed me. I've been leaping all over this place for the last 15 minutes. Come on. Thanks for the dance, Queenie. I'll save you another. You needn't mind. Who are you picking? Let's get this straight, my friend. You tripped me. How do you like that? He almost breaks my leg and says that I tripped him. Oh, looking for trouble? Trying to start something? What's the idea? He to have made a mistake, gentlemen. I apologize. Does that cover the situation? Rather a rough element here tonight. Let's get out of here, Margie. Oh, it's all right with me. Nick. You take the girl to the car. I'll join you in a second. Sure. Waiter. It looks like he's taking it on the land. We'll get him outside. My heart, please. There go your boyfriend. What's the matter with Parky? He certainly took plenty tonight. Maybe that's the way they do it on Park Avenue. All right, ladies. Did you see what became of those three heavy set gentlemen? Uh, yes, sir. They're standing outside the door. Did you want them? No. I'll get them. Yes. You? Something? You know, Miss Peggy, I think when we leave Parky, we make big mistakes. That's what he wanted, wasn't it? Ah, that was big bluff. You know, Parky's got plenty of brains. Get this. You're pulling out of town tomorrow and you ain't coming back. That's very interesting. Would you mind giving me a reason? Yes, thanks. Gentlemen, change your mind about my leaving town? Have you? Are oh, you hurt, Grant? So I've just mussed up a little bit, that's all. What are you doing with those? I'm just getting ready to tighten up a couple of tough nuts. <laughs> so. What are you thinking about? I was just wondering what you'd do if I kissed you. Why don't you try it and see? Hey! I thought you guys were supposed to be tough. Listen, we don't want any more of that guy. You want to chase him out, you can do it yourself. Yellow rats. Hey, why not send this wise guy down a load of logs tomorrow? Nothing doing. I've got a couple to fix a little bit. Well, health worries you. Just let him send the train out. He should be able to handle it after that.
Hello? Sanger? Yeah, wait a minute. Hey, Sanger. Yeah. Telephone. Hello. What's that? How many cars? Well, how'd it happen? Oh, you think so, huh? All right, Ronnie. Clayton Lumber Company. Clayton, California. See, Ed. What's the matter, Paul? Can I see you outside a minute, Peggy? Yes, I guess so. Anything wrong, Paul? No, I just want to go over something with Peggy, so. I'll be right back. What is it? train was just derailed. Six cars went over. Was anyone hurt? No. Brownie was on it, but he jumped. He phoned me from down the line. How did it happen? He thinks somebody tampered with a coupling pin. Who was in charge of the loading? Your little friend, Parky. Oh, well, we know he's all right. Yeah? <laughs> just come in and I want to show you something. Who does that look like? Why, it looks like Parky. Mm -hmm. Now, look. My current son. Sure. <laughs> Fine sap he's made out of you, huh? But why should... Don't you see? It's a perfect setup. He's a stooge for his old man. Why do you think he's made such a play for you? Why, it's the dirtiest trick I ever heard of. If I thought he did a thing like that... Why do you think the guy gave us a phony name? I'm going to tell you something. They're going to sell you out and then give you the laugh. You just wait. Give me that picture. Herman, do you know where Parky is? Yes. There he is, right over there. Hello, Peggy. Funny, I was just thinking about you. Yes, you're just crazy about me, aren't you? Well, I hated you the way I love you. Your life would be in danger. That's very touching. That's you, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> oh, I can give you a better picture than that. Why did you try to hide the fact that you were Curran's son? Well, <laughs> it was supposed to be a secret. Sure, you couldn't have done such good undercover work if we'd have known who you were. Undercover work? What are you talking about? You're through. Check in your equipment and get out of here. I don't know what you're talking about. You just overplayed your hand. You can go back to your father and tell him that we're going to keep this place in spite of him. Wait a minute. You think I came up here... Let go of my arm. And remember what I told you. If you're not off here in 15 minutes, I'll have you ridden off on a rail. I'm not going to let you go until... You cheap stew pigeon. Boy, that's sure telling them off, ain't it? I'll say it is. Hello, Nick. Hey, hello, Parky. What's the matter? You come back to work? Yeah, where's Morton? Morton? He's inside with Sanger. They're having cups coffee. Sanger, huh? Yeah. What's he doing over here? Well, I don't know, but they laugh like anything. I guess Mr. Sanger is making big jokes. <laughs> I'd like to get in on that joke. I guess I get in on it too. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have give five dollars to be in there and seen that. <laughs> well, hello, Mr. Curran. Oh, you know about that too, huh? Yeah, you should have told us who you were and I'd have give you a soft job. All right, you can do that now. I'm through over at the O'Shea outfit. Well, that's out. There's a rumor around that you ditched that log train this morning. Oh, it isn't hard to guess who spread that rumor. You're a tool around here, kid. The men won't work with you. Yeah, you're in bad, but I'll wire your father and make it easy for you. Now, I appreciate that, Mr. Morton. But I happen to be of a very peculiar nature. The mere fact that you gentlemen are so anxious to have me leave makes me want to stay all the more. Well, you're not going to work around here. There's no place for you. <laughs> and one other thing, Mr. Kern. If you ever set foot on the O'Shea property again, you're going to get something that I've been aching to hand you for a long time. You know what that is? Yes. Good morning.
find some for you. Meddlesome jackass. I don't think Mr. Grant would take a step as drastic as that, unless he had pretty good proof. Morton? Morton's the best lumberman in the Northwest. Been with me 20 years. I trust him implicitly. See if you can get that idiot son of mine on the telephone up there. I'll tell him a thing or two. No, wait. Get my attorney. I'll probably have a damage suit on my hand. Never mind that either. Carry me a plane. I'll go up there right away. Yes, sir. Meddlesome chump. Hey, Bucky, yeah. this friend's of yours. Oh, gee, Marty, I'm glad to see you. Kick over a chair, Nick, quick. Sit down, Marty. Well, tell me, did you talk to Peggy? Yes, but it's no use, Parky. She won't listen. What am I going to do, Marty? When I telephone her, she won't talk to me. I go over there, she runs away. I've got to talk to her, Marty, if it's only for ten minutes. Oh, it's hopeless, Parky. She's going to marry Sanger. Sanger? She can't marry him. She doesn't love him. Nobody loves him, only his mother. Oh, I told her she was just marrying for spite, and she told me to mind my own business. So I'm leaving them strictly alone. Well, I'm going over there. She must talk to me. Oh, but it's no use. She and Sanger left for town about a half hour ago. Who's going to marry them? Old man Wesley, the Justice of the Peace, and they made a date to be there at 11 o'clock. What time is it? In 20 minutes, it's going to be 11. Can I borrow your car, Margie? Sure, help yourself. Thanks, honey. Let's go, Nick. I forgot all about flowers. Can you beat that? Don't you think it's a little late to think about that now? Oh, honey, you've got to have a bridal bouquet. You go on up to Wesley. There's a little place back on the corner. It'll only take me a couple of minutes to get one for you. Hey, dang it. <laughs> well, you boys are just in time. We're going to need a couple of witnesses in a few minutes. Sanger, you're not going through with this marriage. Now, where'd you ever get any information like that? If you think there's any doubt about it, why don't you come on up and watch the ceremony? Huh. Peggy must be crazy to marry Big Mug like you. You shut up or I'll bust that nose of yours clear across your face. I'd like to see you try something like that. Now, like just that. let him... Oh, I get it. Trying to work me up into a fight, huh? So you can have me pinched for assault and battery. You're pretty smart, aren't you, Mr. Grant? I owe you a sock in the nose, but I think I'll just say it. <laughs> well, I guess this makes you head man, Sanger. To show you I'm a good sport, I'll buy the flowers. No, thanks. That's strictly my department. But if you're going to be in town a while, why, we might ask you up to dinner sometime. No hard feelings. I wish you everything that's coming to you, Sanger. Thanks. I hope you mean that. I never meant anything more in my life. Hello, boy. So long. So long. What time is it, Nick? Uh, it must be put in. He's gone. I lost my watch. You didn't lose it. He stole it. I thought I saw that guy take something out of your pocket. You sure? But if you search him, you'll find it on him. Police! 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 Hey, police! 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 Man, police! You, you got him! Police! He, police! You got him! Police! Police, man, come here. What are you howling about what? here? This group, he's got my watch. What's that? Who are you calling? Wait a minute now. If you're going to start any of that stuff, I'll take a hand. Well, you dirty little... Keep quiet, I told you. Now, what's all the fuss about? Well, this mug, he'd take my watch. You see him take it? No, I don't see him, but Parky see him. He puts his hand in my pocket and takes my watch. Why, he's a liar. You see him put his hand in this man's pocket and take his watch? You can easily search him and find out, can't you? Sure, go ahead and search. Yeah, go and search him. All his pockets. Go ahead. Wow. Uh, well, what the yeah, I know what you're going to say. Yeah. I wonder how it got there. Yeah. Well, you don't think I'd take a guy's uh, watch, do you? I don't think anything. All I know is this man says you stole his watch and I found it in your pocket. You want to make a charge against him? 
sure. I want him for to be pinched. Come along quietly now. Don't make any fuss. Oh, wait a minute. I'm supposed to be getting married right now. My fiance is waiting over at Wesley's right this minute. I'm telling you. All right. I'll explain everything. I'm going right over there. You're going with us. But you don't need... I said you're going with us. Hey, policeman, will you put handcuffs on him, please? What for? I like for to punch him in his nose. Oh, oh, you... Come on, all of you. Come along. Oh, you got a man named Morton locked up here? Yes, sir. My name's Michael Curran. I want the charges against Morton dropped. Did you prefer the charges? No, I didn't. My son did, without my knowing. Sorry, Mr. Curran. Morton's held in $5,000 bail. He'll have to appear in court. But you can go as bond if you like. If I put up the money, will he be released right away? Certainly. If you'll set this way, I'll give you a form to fill out. Yeah. Sit down, Mr. Curran. Thank you. Taking him a long time to get a bunch of flowers. I got another appointment in 15 minutes. Oh, Sergeant. Hello. I'll be right out. Hey, can I use this phone? Sure, oh, help yourself. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes. In just a minute. Mr. Shane. To you. Hello? Yes? What's that? Why, certainly, I'll come right over. I must go to the police station. Mr. Sang has been arrested. Who's going to sign the complaint? I signed these things. I'll fix you for this. I'll sue you for false arrest. Parker, you better sign them. I think this whole thing can be settled quite amicably, Sergeant. You found your watch, Nick? So why not lock up Mr. Sanger for the day? What do you think we're running here, a day nursery? Well, I don't know, but after all, there seems to be some doubt as to how that watch got into Mr. Sanger's pocket. Yeah, leap in, I suppose. I tell you, the whole thing's a frame-up. These guys planted that watch on me. If you pinch me, you've got to pinch them, too. Great. Well, Father. <laughs> when did you get here? You pack up and get back to New York. A fine mess you've made of everything. I'll be ashamed to look Morton in the face after what you've oh. done to him. Yeah? Well, you'll be ashamed to look him in the face, too, after what I'm going to do to him. You shut up. Shut up yourself, or I'll bust you, too. Oh, you. wait a minute. You're not going to bust anybody. Hey, where do you think you are? In a beer hall? What does this mean? What's this? Another one? What's the meaning of this outrage? Just what particular outrage are you talking about? Peggy, you know I wouldn't steal anybody's watch, Of course you? you wouldn't. Who are you, young woman? And who are you? Uh, Peggy, this is my father. Oh, there's the man that should be arrested. He's the real criminal. What's that? What do you mean, young woman? You know what I mean. Isn't conspiracy a crime? If a man tries to force another man into bankruptcy, isn't that a crime? He sends his son snooping around and says his name is Grant, and his name isn't Grant, but Curran, and Grant tries to cripple your production. Isn't that a crime? Well, that's what he did. The woman's crazy. I think they're all crazy. Your son has Martin arrested for stealing your money. You come in and say he didn't steal your money, and you bail him out. You have this guy, Pigs, for stealing your watch. When we bring him in, nobody wants to sign the complaint. You harp about a mysterious conspiracy. I have a good mind to take a whole bunch and throw you in a padded cell. I want this young woman to explain why. It's very simple. Miss O'Shea's father owns the Upper River Camp. They claim that you bought some of the O'Shea notes for the sole purpose of foreclosing on their property. Why, do you think I'd do a thing like that? Talk with your squawking. Yeah, well, I'm going to do a lot of squawking. Well... Is a gentleman who could explain. Well, hello, Mr. Curran. Say, this is a fine thing your son has done. We'll get to that later, Mr. Morton. Right now, we'd like to know who bought the O'Shea notes from the bank. Speak up, Morton. Who bought them? It was Sanger. You're a liar. You bought them yourself, and you know you did. Oh, you finally got here, eh? Why don't you come down here when I sent for you? Did you buy those notes? Oh, I did. Nothing criminal in that, is it? Well, they might be, if you could tell us where you got the money to buy them. I have a written confession from your auditor who tells us that he and Morton have been robbing you systematically for the past ten years. That finishes you. Lock him up again. No, wait a minute, Mr. Curran. You're through. I don't care what you did to me, but you're going to make good to Miss O'Shea. Oh, yeah? Well, what about him? There's a man who planned the whole thing. He's going to walk out, and I'm going to be left holding the bag, huh? Why, you cheap blabbermouth. Grab those colors, Now, I'll show this guy. He can't pop off a Take him off the bag and lock him out. How about that bail? Step in the other room, I'll return your money. Hey, I like for to have my watch. 
You'll have to leave this as evidence if you want to prosecute Sanger. No, give me my watch back and let me get out of here before somebody's pinching me. Oh, Grant, I want to congratulate you. Well, I can understand you feeling as you did, but I can't understand you marrying a fellow like Sanger. I wanted to hurt you. I didn't think you really cared about me. Oh, Grant! What's trying to do? Peggy and I are going to be married. We are, aren't we? Yes. Uh, put your arms around me, you poor set. Don't choke her. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.